Wow. Uh, how to follow up last week's video. Um, and last week's game rant uh, with, with, with one for this week. I mean, this week was very similar results. Eagles lose for the first time in franchise history on Thanksgiving. They lose to the Lions 45-14. to And I'm just stating the obvious here. It's been a mess. And it's continuing to be a mess. And, uh, boy, if Chip was on the hot seat last week. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, listen. When I started making this series a, a, a season ago, I wanted to make it so that people could see, you know, um, you know, what it is to be a fan of, of the Eagles, you know, what, what, you know, you know, Philadelphia fans get a lot of bad rap and, and this and that. And I wanted to put it together and kind of show you guys, you know, this is what it is. This is what we are. Um, you know, put some of those kind of misnomers to bed, you know. Um, and, you know, I also wanted to kind of show you, you know, the passion that, that that's there for this team, this team that's never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there, there are fan bases that are in the easy tables and then there's the fan bases that aren't. And, uh, so for some of us, we do have to work harder at it. <laughs> and I don't want to keep beating this point, but it is, it's, it, it, it's true. Um, the Eagles certainly test us. Um, you know, and I know a lot of Eagle fans were making videos about Lane Johnson's comments and I'm going to address that too. Last week he said that, you know, it's not much of a home field advantage and the fans, you know, should be there more. I mean, you know, look, it's stating the obvious. The fans pay part of his salary. I mean, we buy the merchandise, we buy the tickets to go to the games. You know, season ticket holders are certainly putting a lot of money towards the Eagles year after year. And for those people who do that, and God bless the season ticket holders, man. I mean, look, this is my season ticket. This is, this is my season ticket seat right here. In, in my the room where I watch all the games and you know I don't have to keep standing up and down when people have to go to the bathroom or something so I guess in some ways <laughs> um it, it it's good but yeah I've I, I've been to my share of Eagle games in person but man the money that is spent it's not just on going to the game you know having the ticket to the game it's the merchandise it's the food for the tailgate the food and drink for the tailgate the gas the 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 parking ticket the you know prices uh everything that goes into it these people are paying their their hard earned money to watch this team year after year and to be ridiculed by the players and look when a player starts to poke at the fans the player obviously he has no he just has doesn't have a clue I mean, maybe that you can get away with that in Jacksonville or Tennessee or, you know, I'm not knocking those fans, but I'm just saying, maybe you can get away with that a little more. That You can't get, not here. Eagle fans have been around watching this team. You have generation after generation of fans. You have fans that were watching them at old Franklin Field back before there were Super Bowls. Uh, you have fans that sat in the vet, you know, Veterans Stadium, Lincoln Financial Field now. I mean, generations of fans. And the goal is always the same for all of us. It's to finally win a damn Super Bowl and be rewarded for all the years of loyalty to this team. And I'm not saying you just be a loyal to a team just to get a you know championship, but it certainly helps. <laughs> um, listen, I, I can sit here and spin you a yarn about you know what this team needs to do better, this, that, the other thing. I'm just going to say this. I really think that this whole thing going forward, falls on the owner, Jeffrey Lurie. Um, now, we can sit here and say, okay, well, you know, it's time to fire Chip. Let's get rid of Chip. Well, if they're not going to do that, at least I hope that Jeffrey takes the general manager role away from him. Because Chip Kelly does not know how to, accept, how to, how to uh, assess NFL talent. I think that's pretty, much pretty clear. When you get rid of talent, Pro Bowl talent, and replace them with guys who you feel may fit the system. You don't even replace certain guys. They, they didn't replace Mathis. They let him walk away. They didn't replace him on the offensive line at guard. Didn't do anything to replace the receivers. I mean, they bring in Nelson Aguilar as a rookie, but you can't count on a rookie, you know, to replace a Pro Bowl wideout in, in Jeremy Macklin. 
Um, the running back situation is a mess. Um, because they're running to Marco Murray in 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 you know out out of um sets that he's never really run of had had any success running out of in the past. Um, I mean it just goes on and on. And the only old saying NFL stands for not for long, right? You're either going to be a coach who's won a you know won a championship, won a Super Bowl, you know, or, or been on a staff that's won, knows what it takes to win, or you're going to be a guy coming in with all these ideas about what he wants to do and how innovative he's going to be, and it doesn't work out. Listen, the first year under Chip, they went ten and six, they won the division, and maybe that was a surprise because that really wasn't supposed to happen. So we thought, right? It was going to be a rebuilding year, and there wasn't going to be much success. Maybe they win five six games. Well, they went 10-6, and six, and I think that's one of the biggest detriments that, that has happened for Chip because I think his head blew up after that. He can't, comes in, Mr. Innovator, right, wins a division title, goes to the playoffs. They lose at home, but they got there in his first year. He said, ah, this is easy. You know, look at me. You know, no, no, no one can figure me out. We, I, I did this in one year. Imagine what I'm going to do through two and three seasons. Um, and he felt it was necessary to get rid of Deshaun Jackson and, Jer- and uh, you know, uh, LaShawn McCoy and Jeremy Macklin and, and Nick Foles and everything. And, you know, it, you know, so yeah, I mean, that first season may have been the biggest detriment to him because y- you start to think you're better than you are. And you start to think, oh, well, I can just assess everything. Just give me the keys to the castle right away. I, I can get this thing, you know, I can win a Super Bowl in the next couple of years. It doesn't always work that way. You have to have talent. You know, all this thing about culture. You know the only culture that I want is a winning culture. That's the only time I want to hear the word culture thrown around a team. And you know what? That's the only time it should be thrown around any team in any sport. Culture. Winning culture. That's when you bring up culture. Okay? In, In my book, that's when you bring it up. You know, so I, I mean, you know, I mean, Mr. Smoothie King has got to stop this with the culture being talent. Because I think it's been, it's been shown the last season and, and into this one that talent certainly wins. Because the Eagles lost to teams last year who had more talent than them. And they're losing the teams. This, look, you, you, you're going up against the Lions tonight, okay, this afternoon. Who's their big player? Who's their big playmaking player? Megatron. Now, he hasn't been very Megatron this season. But you got to double him the whole game. They don't know how to do that. It's the simple things that this team just doesn't do. And it costs them every... It just costs them time and time again. And it's ridiculous. They have a defensive coordinator who, who won't adjust to anything. Uh, it... And again, look, I don't want pity from other people. You know, <laughs> I'm not looking for pity here. I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you like, like it is. And for Lane Johnson, look, your, your offensive line might as well be called the laundromat for all the times that there's flags being thrown at you guys. Okay. In other words, there's a lot of laundry on the field with you guys, constantly screwing up every week. So you know, maybe instead of worrying about what type of home field advantage you have or don't have, you should be worrying more about what you're doing wrong week to week. The screw drives up. Because you go backwards, not forwards. And they've been one of the biggest problems. And you know what? There's just not enough talent on that offensive line. And that, again, falls on the coach, slash GM and Chip. He's the one that put this thing together, or didn't put it together. You know, people say, oh, Eagle fans are too hard. They're too hard on the coach. They, yeah, you just want to get rid of the guy. Well, Again, we wa- we're watching this every week. This is our team. You let us worry about our team and what what decisions should be made, you know? Because we're the ones that are watching this every week. And this is an absolute disaster. And when you have a team that's players gave up on the coach and you have a coach that hasn't had, you know, the success that some other coaches may have had in this league and, and can be given the, the, the leeway to make those changes and to make those decisions because you know they have had his have had a history of doing it, like the Tom Coughlin's of the world, or the Bill Belichick's of the world, or, you know, insert name here, coaches that have won Super Bowls, you know, or a Super Bowl, then okay, 
We can give him a little leeway, but this guy came out of college. No NFL experience whatsoever. Came out of college, you know, with all this, the, the smoothies and, the, and the, the tempo and the pace and this and that, and culture beats talent, getting rid of guys, Pro Bowl players, not replacing them, just going beyond Thunderdome with basically what he's done. And we have a team right now that's quit. We have a bunch of tin men out there with no hearts, with, with no heart and no guts. That's basically what they are. You know, I, I can count on one hand the players that I would want to see back next season. And I understand it, you, you're not going to, you know, be able to, you know, cut everybody and not bring other because there's contracts involved and other teams aren't going to take on some contracts and stuff like that. I get that. But there are, I, I, literally, I can, I can count on one hand the guys that I would bring back next season. Some of the guys that's actually shown me something this season, show me some heart. You know, show me some talent. You know, it's disappointing. You know, um, oh, excuse me. It's disappointing that, you know, we have to make videos like this every week, seemingly. After games, after losses, after, you know, debacles. You know, it's a shame. But the truth of the matter is, and the fact of the matter is, if anything else, Chip has got to be stripped of that GM. Because he doesn't know how to, how to, how to assess NFL talent. Look at the drafts he's had. How many misses has there been in those drafts? We're talking about first-round picks. They got a first-round pick from a few years ago. Smith, he can't even get the field. I mean, for every Jordan Hicks and, and uh, you know, I can't even name any other players in the draft that he's hit on. For You know, there, there's so many misses. And that's in three drafts. That's just not one draft. That's three. There are no impact players in this, the, the past two drafts. Jordan Hicks was like, he, he was their, their, the best pick. He was a third-round pick. They hit on him. I'll give him credit for that. He got hurt, unfortunately. But he was, he was a playmaker on defense. He was making a ton of plays. Wish he was there now. <laughs> okay? But there's been way more misses. Now, that's assessing talent. It's like he has a comfort zone with like the Oregon players or the Pac-12 players and stuff like. It's like you gotta just. I I don't know, but what I do know is that something's got to change. And I hope to God it changes. You know, and I do. I I. I mean, you 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 talk about you know I've seen a lot of bad seasons. You know, losing seasons, I should say. But even then, you had players that showed you something. We got nothing now. You know? Man, show some fire out there. I said last week, at least Sproles was like yelling at, at Sanchez. You know, guys, show something. They're, they're just lifeless out there. I mean, the Lions look like the greatest offense in the history of football today and I know they've been playing better in recent weeks but they and they're they're all they, they have not been any great shakes this season the Lions and the Eagles made them look like a, the, the whole team was a bunch of pro bowlers the whole the whole team offense defense everything that's when I know that it, that that a coach has lost the team when you have back-to-back games like that look they said it on the Eagles uh post-game show they said that this week would be a big, you know, test for these players because last week they were blown out at home. There's been a lot of criticism on them. They've been pushed up against the wall. How are they going to respond? Well, there you go. In front of a national audience, that's how they respond. Nothing in here. Ten men. So Lane Johnson can complain all he wants about the fans. Can't blame them this week. It was in Detroit. Thank God. The only saving grace for them this week is that wasn't a home game. 
Can you imagine two straight home games like that? Oh, my God. You, you talk about Lane Johnson wanting to hear the fans. Oh, I think he would hear the fans after that. If, if that was a home game this week, he would certainly hear the fans. And it wouldn't be in a good way. Again, I mean, look, you, 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 you see us Eagle fans make these videos week to week. You know, and, and, and E-Rock and, and Delia and, and, you know, Ripper and all, all the Eagle fans that make these videos and these series week to week and kind of lamenting things week to week with how things have gone. And, you know, the, the, the answer is we don't have the answer. And this whole thing is going to come down to, um, to the owner, Jeffrey Lurie. It's on him now. He gave Chip Kelly way too much um, control way too early. And now it's on him to change this thing, to get this thing corrected. Either take the GM role away from Chip, get rid of Chip, you know, fire him at the end of the season, whatever. Whole new coaching staff. And I'll tell you this, if they go whole new, whole new coaching staff, I don't want any more college guys. I'm done with the college thing. I want NFL-ready coaches. I mean, guys coming from winning organizations would be nice, too. Look, it's, in the end, it's really a simple game. You got to block, you got to tackle, you got to make plays. I look at the teams that are winning, either the perennial winners like New England, like the Pittsburghs out there, you know, or, or the teams that are on the rise now, like the Cardinals. And the difference between those teams and those organizations and, and what the Eagles have done is that they were able to assess talent. Their coaching staff, their GMs, every, they were able to assess the talent, you know, and put those teams together. And the half success, even if you lose some players, like New England did over the years, you're able to replenish it and continue to win. And that's coaching, that's, that's talent evaluating, and that's the biggest key. And I'm not saying anything here that people don't already know. You know, the fact is, you, I'll throw Arizona as the example, okay? Arizona, now they had a chance the last few years to trade away Larry Fitzgerald, to trade away some of their players because they were having some down years. And the coaching staff he said, you know what, we're not going to get rid of these guys. These guys are what we call leaders. We're going to surround them with good young talent. And that's what they did. And look at them. One of the best teams in the league right now, the Panthers. And the Panthers were able, were able to overcome losing a Steve Smith, losing a D'Angelo Williams, because they had the franchise quarterback in place and they had the defense in place. Now, if the Eagles had a franchise quarterback here and, and, a, and a strong defense, moving guys like Macklin and Jackson and McCoy wouldn't hurt as much, but they don't. And they thought that they, they were better than they were. And, and a lot of us were fooled. I was fooled. I'll admit it. I was fooled. I thought this team was going to be a lot better than what they are right now. A lot better. I was fooled. Shame on me. You know, but getting back to what the Panthers are doing, what the Cardinals, I mean, I'm using them as an example because they're two teams that have been on the rise in recent years, right? Panthers certainly this year. <laughs> they haven't lost a game. But they're doing it with how the Steelers always won. You know, with how some other teams, Baltimore's won, right? Even New England to a lesser extent. But the teams that win, you run the ball and you play defense. It's the old hat. It might not be sexy. You know, you're not going to make the highlight reel every week unless, like, Cam Newton scoring touchdowns, right? But guess what? You win. You stop the other team, and you, you, you score points. You score enough to win week to week. And you stop the other team. It's easier said than done. I know that. Look, I'm not a GM. I'm, I'm, I'm not a coach. I, I've never played a snap in the NFL. But I have watched a lot of football over the years to know this is how you're supposed to... This is how you win. This is how the teams that win, win. We, we can't all have the, the offensive genius masterminds to put things together. You know, the Walshes of the world and the, you know, the, uh, what the Rams were doing you know, in, in, in St. Louis those years, right? It can't always be that way. But the old hat is you play defense and you run the ball and you have success. You control the clock and, and you win games. And the Eagles just don't do that. And I don't think they'll certainly do that with Chip Kelly. 
because he always wants to be the, the smartest man in the room. You know, he always wants to try to outthink everything. And it's just, it doesn't work. He, he's trying to put, he's trying to put, uh, um, uh, square pegs and round holes. It, it, it doesn't work that way, Chet. It's frustrating. It's annoying. And again, I'm not, I'm not making these videos for pity. I'm making these videos because I'm a fan of this team and I'll always be a fan of this team. You know, I had some giant fan telling me, oh, if you want to see a Super Bowl, come over to the Meadowlands. Look, your team needs a GPS to know where they're playing, all right? <laughs> I mean, they're called the New York Giants, and they play in the frickin' Meadowlands, all right? <laughs> At least the Eagles play where they say they play, all right? But anyhow. <laughs> um, it, it is. It's annoying. But the Giants, they, they've done it too, right? It's, simple. it's a sim simple formula. You run the ball, you play defense. Okay, it's nice to have those those big time playmakers, you know, receivers and this and that. It, it's awesome. I mean, it makes the highlights on on NFL Network and Sports Center. We love it in fantasy. But to win the grand prize, that it's been proven. This is what you do. You play defense. You run the ball. Yes, you have to be able to pass. Yes, you need that franchise quarterback. But those are the simple rules to win. It's Seattle's done in recent years, right? Denver. I mean, all, all those years they couldn't win the Super Bowl. They get, ter they get, uh, you know, Terrell Davis, uh, Terrell Davis. Sorry, <laughs> thinking the name like Terrell Owens. Terrell Davis and the defense together, and look, they won. <laughs> you know, as great as John Elway was, they didn't win until Terrell Davis came along and that defense was put together, right? And then they won too. All right. <laughs> um. It is. It's it's old hat. It's it's kind of boring in some ways, but but that's how you that's how you win. You need the franchise quarterback. You need the defense in place, and you need to be able to run the ball. You need to play big big boy football to win. Maybe someday we'll have that. And it's a shame we don't now. This is a fan base that's starving to win, starving for it, and 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 I'm hoping to see it at some point before my time's over. I mean, I'm 37 now, and yes, I, it's not necessarily old, but I ain't getting any younger. <laughs> and I don't care if I'm in a hospital bed, wheelchair, you know, if the Eagles win at that time, going to the parade. It doesn't matter to me what I have to do. I'll walk from here if I can't, if I can't get into the city because it's too packed. I'll walk to get there, believe me. Eagles Nation, I'm, I'm, you know, like you, I'm very much um, disappointed with how the season's gone, and I know changes need to be made, and hopefully they'll they'll be made, and you know this this can get corrected. It might take some time, you know, particularly if they get a new coach in here, a whole new regime. It will take some years, but bottom line is the corrections that need to be made. I hope get made. I really do. Because I don't want to go through 45-14 every week. Now next week they're playing the Patriots, so that might be like 65-14. to 14. <laughs> Right? But it hurts. And yes, Lane Johnson, it hurts because I care. Because I'm a fan. And our fans have been here before, long before you were an Eagle and long after you, you'll leave. So don't you dare talk about the fans. Anyhow, uh, tough to say this after that loss, but have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and uh, I will see you in the next video, and um, we'll have to just, you know, discuss this again during another week. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is what it is anymore, guys and gals out there in Eagle Nation, and hopefully, hopefully we get through this. <laughs> Hopefully the better days are coming up sooner than later. <laughs> All right, everyone, take care.